Welcome back to the channel everyone. We finally got some sunlight for the first time in several weeks here. We've had sporadic sunlight maybe an hour or two in the last couple weeks and we've had negative 50 plus mile an hour wind chill and we've got like negative five outside right now. We can jump out here. It is freezing out here. I'm only going to stay out for a second. I was just clearing all the snow off my greenhouse. It has been wicked out here, but we've got a little bit of sun and I've got a new project that I was working on. You can see this little solar heating box. They're multiplying in the greenhouse. And my solar air heater, solar water heater. We're gonna take some temps from our water heater because I put myself a little switch in here. I don't mind my haphazard wiring, but I rigged up a switch so I can turn it on and off so I can basically let it charge up. It's been sitting for about 20 minutes, so we're going to check that maybe after about half an hour. Give it about 10 more minutes on that. But before I get into this little solar air heater, I want to talk about a few things between heating air and heating water. So as I've shared and as we've learned, heating water requires a lot more energy and a lot more BTUs to heat that water as opposed to actually heating air. You can see all of this condensation inside the box. I had this sitting out in the garage where it was like negative 10 degrees sitting out in an unheated garage. So I brought it in here and it's starting to steam up on me. It's been in here for about 10 minutes and I'm going to go through this build, but I want to talk about a few things before we delve into this build. When we're heating water, it requires a lot more BTUs. Man, that sun feels good on my face. I'm gonna have to shed my coat here it's about 50 degrees or so in the greenhouse and being negative 5 with negative 30 windshield outside is pretty darn cool to be able to come out here and start sweating so back to the water heating here it's gonna require a lot more BTUs to heat the water because of the density and the amount of BTUs it's able to hold and transfer but when you're heating air with a solar air heater or your actual furnace in your house it requires 0.24 BTUs to raise a pound of air by one degree. Now when we're talking about water, it requires one full BTU to raise the temperature of one pound of water by one degree Fahrenheit. Now to make that a little more relatable, a gallon of water weighs 8.33 pounds and it's going to require 8.33 BTUs to heat that one gallon of water just one degree Fahrenheit. Now comparing water to air, if we take 8.33 pounds of air and have to heat that by one degree Fahrenheit, it's only going to require 1.99 or almost two BTUs. Now just to give an idea, there's about 13.3 cubic feet of air in one pound of air. So if we're relating it to one gallon of water, you're going to take 8.33 the poundage of a gallon of water times 13.3 coming up with a hundred and ten point something cubic feet of air you're going to be able to heat by one degree and that's only with two BTUs and now when you're heating that one gallon of water you're using 8.33 BTUs to heat just the one gallon now the same works in reverse your air is not going to hold as much heat into the night your water is why we use thermal heat sinks and rocks and stones for releasing that energy because of the BTU holding potential so it's going to require a lot more energy to heat the water than it's going to heat the air hopefully that didn't get too confusing for everybody I tried to break it down into numbers that we were going to understand gallons and cubic feet so now that we covered that I want to take some temps coming out of our little solar water heater here and then we'll kind of check out the build on our little solar air heater down here so before I take some temps I've been using this we got a little ice on here because it got darn cold and I've been throwing snow in here because I used our little pump I unhooked it and I had to re-zip tie it up so it didn't pop off on me but I used our little pump to pump water and fill this 55 gallon drum so we took most of the water out of this tank and filled it in here and this is holding some decent heat and I've had this little recycled window on there and it's definitely pulling some heat we're sitting 53 degrees so that's pretty darn cool we're sitting 53 54 in between there on a negative five day with a negative 30 windshield so it is freaking cold outside but we've got a whole tank of water that is 50 degrees and that is pretty amazing to me and this little recycled window is just kind of sheltering it and amplifying the heat and banking that solar energy into this container 
along with all of our Jean Payne tubing and our little PEX tubing basically holding all of that heat in the floor. So we're getting as much heat on this end of the greenhouse because most of our heat is consisted through this tunnel and down on the other side where our Jean Payne heater is blowing out. So there was a lot of material to digest with the actual heating of water and air and I had a lot of numbers coming at you. So if anybody's got any questions, drop it in the comments below. Any suggestions, any ideas, we're gonna check some temps. I'm gonna click this on and then we're going to pull some water out of there. Got some water coming out here. Oh, it's warm too. That is pretty darn cool. So I shared a short video of this the other day. I just want to kind of get a feel for it. All right, so we pulled that water out of there and it, that's what we've been using to melt the snow. We've been throwing snow in this bucket after we drained it into our 55 gallon tub. So I just collected a little batch of maybe 20, 30 minute old water that's sitting 88 degrees that is amazing that's pretty wild 88 87 degrees coming out of there and it is literally steaming when it was coming out this is the whole purpose of it we are trying to thermally bank all of that energy into this water you can see it just cutting right through that ice down there so we are having success with our little solar heater pretty darn amazing i'm going to shut that off so we can hear me when i'm going over this little solar air heating box so it's really hard to see in here and i apologize for the condensation but i have two old radiators it's so black in there you can't really tell everything is just blacked out so down in the corner there you can see i've got some foam this is my intake over here you can see the little intake i've got foam blocking it and it is completely insulated from the outside we basically took a whole bunch of one by twos or one by threes and we took some of our foam so we completely foamed the whole inside and this is my transfer right here so i basically took a rubber gasket so i took this little gasket and cut a hole out you can't really see it behind my actual radiator there but up in the corner we've got a nice transfer right here where this is pulling all of that air out of the box. It's only been out here about 20 minutes, so it's really not that warm yet, but it's definitely warmer than the air in the greenhouse. So it's probably about 60 or 70 degrees coming out of there. So I've got this little solar fan running on that little solar panel right there, like a five or 10 watt solar fan. So I put some slits in this so I could just pop my fan right inside this little downsizing gasket. So it's about two inches on the other end and it's about four inches on this side. And on the inside, I took one of our hose clamps and just clamped it in so it will not pull back out. And then I slid my fan in, clamped it in, and it is blowing some decent airflow out of there and it should get all of that condensation it's definitely not as condensed up as it was when i first started i wish it was a little easier to see inside here you can see all of the old air conditioning parts it looks like an old radiator that's what i called it but this actually was an air conditioner inside this thing i painted all of those fins inside the box and all of those fins are going to create a lot of surface area so we have tons and tons of surface area now anybody can take pop cans and throw them inside a box and make a pop can solar heater, but this is my own unique spin on it. I wanted to use an old recycled air conditioner I found on the side of the road. One man's trash is another man's treasure, and this is a perfect example. I wish it was a little easier to see inside the box so you could get a better grasp of it. I'll come out and show this on a nice cloudy day so everybody can see well into the box because it's getting a lot of reflection. It's very hard to see in there. But I basically just split open that old air conditioner, ran water through the lines, cleaned it out. It was just a little rusty. It doesn't look like it had been used for years. So found it on the side of the road, took those two panels off, and we basically got two radiators sitting inside the box. This was a free build. Everything I had, this little solar fan, the box, the window, just like these windows every time I see a window on the side of the road I am picking up windows all the time people might think I'm crazy for always grabbing trash but when you're putting it to a use like this I'm actually warm in here I'm gonna have to shed this coat it's getting warmer than I thought it was going to I'm pretty astonished with this greenhouse the double layer the Jean Payne heating and all of the little systems I've built and put in place I really want to get some temperatures from this box but like I said we've only been out here 20 minutes I just brought this from my freezing garage it was like negative 10 or something like that in the garage so this thing still has to warm up we've got a nice sunny day today so I'm gonna let this operate and then I'm gonna 
gonna bring another update on this to actually show what kind of BTUs we're putting out and what kind of heat this is actually cranking out. So if I'm continually blowing all of this heat right down here at our tank, once I get this filled back up with all the snow, I'll be able to continue melting snow, I'll be able to continue banking energy, and I'm gonna superheat or basically supercharge this water. And if I can get 80 or 90 degree water in this tank by the time night falls, I am in really, really good shape. With these freezing temperatures, I really haven't spent much time out here. I've came out and checked on everything just to make sure it's still alive. And I was kind of worried at first. I did not know if this was going to be successful greenhouse this winter because we had that dang polar vortex come through or whatever it's called. We had negative 50 some, negative 60 some windshield blowing over this greenhouse with like 60 mile an hour winds and we're out in the country all cornfields so it looked like armageddon out there and we couldn't see about 10 feet in front of our face it's been pretty wicked so being able to have some type of extra heating device in here is going to be very crucial for me and if anybody's got any questions on the actual design of this box it was very simple and like i said it was all recycled material really the only thing i've paid for is a nice roll of this reflective tape because it is so malleable it's like metal you can kind of bend it down and crunch it and it holds very very well it's much more durable in those moisture filled conditions like a greenhouse like this so i'm quite shocked to see that we've survived all of this freezing freezing temperatures our little baby kale i was worried about this you can see little kale sprouting up all these kale doing well all our beets everything's alive we've got liquid on the ceiling we've got water in here not frozen ice all over everything everything is still alive we've got lots of sprouts coming up in there it's very hard to see with the camera but i can see millions of little lettuce sprouts coming up and to be able to sprout in the middle of a polar vortex which we're not used to we're used to seeing maybe negative 30 or something like that we had negative 50 to 60 degree windshield blowing over the greenhouse and that is just brutal for us so i was really excited to bring this little heating box out here you can see that it's really really drawn some energy off of that it's already picking up this thing was about 20 degrees when i brought it in here because i checked the glass temp the glass temp is heated up to about 52 not sure if we'll be able to pick up real well what we're blowing out of there try and shine it up through there into the box it's only showing about 45 46 it's going to continue to roll up and like i said i will bring a nice update where i get some good data from this i know everybody likes to see the numbers i like to bring those numbers to everybody i like to share the facts i like to get it down I like to get it nailed down so everybody understands what's going on and sees the actual potential and i wanted to come up with something that wasn't just a solar pop can heater and i wanted to put this sucker inside the greenhouse and for lack of space, for my free recycled materials, it was all just kind of based on what I had on hand. So I could build a huge one outside and I may do that next winter and have to really insulate it. But on a sunny day like this, we could be blowing 100 degrees in from a box outside the greenhouse. But then again, I'm casting shade on certain parts of my greenhouse, having it closer to the greenhouse and outside. Right now, I'm only casting shade on my actual tank. And this tank, all of my egg paint has pretty well washed off by this point it's been a couple months now and we're, we're able to put good water heat into this with our solar water heater so being able to bank some extra energy on this solar air heater is super valuable to us and we're just kind of multi-charging this tank in the hopes that we can have a superheated thermal heat sink before going into the nighttime because the overnight is the worst times for us because everything's ran off solar so we're really losing a lot of energy at nighttime because we don't have an inverter we don't have a whole lot of batteries like everything in this greenhouse is basically stuff I found for free so that's the way I like to do it I'm doing this as cheaply as I possibly can and eventually I will build myself a nice large solid frame greenhouse but for now I'm just learning and experimenting and sharing everything I'm learning so stay tuned for the update where I bring some hard numbers and some data from this little box very cool to me and I was really excited to bring this to everybody it's getting a little easier to see in there now you can see all my radiator fins or my air conditioner fins it has a nice copper coil going through it you can see all the ends popping out and I just used a nice little plate at the bottom to hold both of these back 
we've got wicked wind out there you can hear it just ripping and knocking snow off you can see where the snow is only left nice blue skies seeing that sun is amazing to me and using all the energy from it is even better we're breaking all of that depressing winter wind and we have been locked down in the house for the last couple days because of this storm everybody in the country except over on the west coast is basically getting hit with the same stuff we are so I thought I'd share all of this information and I just wanted to get outside and do some oxygen therapy in the greenhouse so if anybody's got any questions please drop them in the comments below any ideas any suggestions definitely hit me with those too and a big big shout out to all of my subscribers you guys are totally awesome lots of feedback lots of internet working we're bouncing ideas off each other and that is the best part about all this you guys can see something from behind the camera that I might not be picking up and help me think outside the box at the same time so I really appreciate that stay tuned as I will bring some facts for everybody we're finally getting all the condensation off of our box and I'm gonna pick up some temperatures here in the next day or two if we've got some good sunny days and I'll share all of the data temps inside outside everything all just like I always do I like to bring them facts to everybody so stay tuned for that and thank you very much